Hi, Carmen. Carmen, can you hear me okay? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Great, and you see me, great. <laughs> yeah, it's all working, it's all working. So how's it going? It's good, we're trying to make it coming in as well. Oh. So for me, everything is okay. I'll mute myself. <laughs> Okay, I think this may okay. be this may be a slight delay on your um, your audio. Yeah, no, kick me out. I was on the other pre room, whatever, right? With Cecile and and she added me here, but uh, we were still trying to fix Peter. And now I'm not in that preparation room, so I don't know what they are doing. Hopefully, he will come in, and he will not let me alone. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. I mean, Peter, if you're here and you can't get in, just post something in the chat and then we can uh, talk you through it. Yeah, let's see. Peter is not here, so I think uh, they closed that. Uh... <laughs> Too early for him. Okay. Okay, so we still got a minute or so, so hopefully Peter makes it in in the next 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Peter, if you're there, maybe just, just type something in the chat so that we know you're here and... Uh... We lost him, I think. Yeah. He was having trouble with the camera, but I said that he should join without that. At least uh, we hear, we can hear him, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. But let, let's give him one more minute, um, and then then we can start with like the introduction round and uh, and take it from there. Okay, if you're just joining to the uh, to the roundtable now, we're, we're just waiting another minute for Peter. Um, else, we'll, we'll we'll start with with Carmen. Okay, and uh, well, P Peter is here. Okay, can't access my mic and camera. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know if he used the right link to here and uh, yeah. So if you're here, Peter, I think all you need to do is, I think at the top of the screen, it should say something like share my audio and video. It's a button um, and that's the button you want to press, right? Uh, but then it hangs, huh? Are you using Chrome as a browser? I think everything is nice. Well, let's let's start the introduction with with Carmen anyway, since there's a few people here. So, um, well, welcome to the uh, the IBM. Uh, Round table. Unfortunately, Peter's having some difficulties getting in, but we've at least got Carmen here, so um, we can do the introductions here. Um, well, Carmen, uh, tell us a couple of things about yourself. 
Hey, hello, uh, Alan and, and everyone um, in the audience. So I am uh, working for IBM for 11 years uh, now, and I'm in the tech sales um, space with, uh, in general, for, for, so for the same 11 years, a previously application developer, uh, and I am in diff I, I was working in different areas of our former middleware or application integration, the way we call it, uh, more, more connected to the topic of today. And in the last years, I specialized uh, a lot also on business process management. So to everything about automation and uh, recently we got robotic process automation coming in. And now uh, starting this year, I'm back to the tech sales leading the EMEA team for integration portfolio. And that's where the API um, sits. And as I mentioned, we also see a lot of um, synergies between integration and automation as well, a portfolio, so that uh, can bring the two worlds uh, together, which are quite connected anyway um, um, in the end, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense, yeah. Um, okay, so we're here today to talk about, um, you know, what's next, right? So. APIs have been around for a while now. Yesterday, I heard the term modern APIs, which excited me a lot because it gave us the impression that, you know, things are progressing and moving forward. And we're now at the stage where we're talking about modern APIs. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about, okay, that, that progression of APIs and also, um, you know, what the future holds. So, you know, things like, you know, GraphQL, Kafka, et cetera, you know, some of these things as well. So um, if it's okay with you, Carmen, I think we can, we can start. And, um, I'll keep an eye out for Peter if he tries to get in. Uh, otherwise, Peter, I guess he's doing a full reboot at this point in time. Um, and we'll try and get back in again. But uh, well, yeah. let, let's kick. I not have it, so let's see how it goes only with me. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> well, was... we try. We try. Yeah, he was having some good points though, so I hope he can make it right uh, as we yeah. split a bit um, perspectives. Yeah. But let's start, yes. Definitely. Okay, okay. So, the, you know, the first question is, um, as I said, you know, when you look back at integration, you know, starting with file transfer, message queuing, um, you know, ESBs, full workflow integration, you know, we've gone through this evolution to a point where we're at today where, you know, API is basically the king, right? Uh, why do you think that APIs were so, so successful? Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll talk more from the technology perspective. If I'm looking backwards, I think um, I remember when we were doing ESBs and discussing with our customers. And at some point, I think we came with the need uh, or requested need from the market and from our customers towards adopting multi-channel. And I remember when the mobile channel came in. Then when we saw this need of exposing applications, the backend data to consumers, to maybe mobile developers in an easily and, um, and seamless way for them to consume and reuse that information. Uh, as you know, the multi-channel approach was that we deliver the same services and the same experience to our customers through different channels. So I think with the ESB, we were able to do this a certain extent, but we were lacking a bit of flexibility and ease of exposure this data. And also, of course, the challenge of exposing this in a secured way and controlled and manageable, manageable way, right? So I guess they were successful in my mind because they feel a gap and a need, right? That came with, with the need from the market of adopting multi-channel and delivering the information towards different channels, you know, easy and fast and easy to consume and secured way. That's, uh, that's uh, my, um, my belief. And um, well, now Peter would, would probably comment <laughs> here a bit more, but I guess that, that's how I see it. Um, and I think there was also maybe a need of speed as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, ESB, the ESB started to become larger and larger, and we observe a bit of slowness in development, having one team uh, you know, being able to deliver integration for entire organization, different application, different domains. So we've seen a bit of slowness. And then I guess the API came also to give a bit higher flexibility and speed in delivering some informations as they needed, as they were needed by different consumer application or different partners, if we are talking about it, exposing this externally. 
Right. And I, I guess it's also that sense of, you know, delivering context sensitive information, right? So, you know, the API encapsulates, you know, a specific thing. If I think back to, you know, old SOAP requests where, you know, you look through them and you've got like 1,000 things in there and it's just a jumble sale of data, right? It's basically delivering database tables from one system to another. But I think with the APIs, it's, it's a lot more, you know, context sensitive and, uh, and it also acts on demand as well, right? I think that's uh, another point that, you know, you can get, you know, context sensitive at the right time. Yeah, and then and then we build the API management, right? It's, it's first we had a security gateway to expose information and services in a secured way to take care about encryption, decryption, policies, access rules, controls, and so on. And then the API management came on top, right, to hide this complexity and deliver this API in a in an easily and and um, way and. And I guess also maybe the other thing that made successfully from the technology perspective was that the approach was on a low code configurable approach, right? To make it also easily to develop new APIs, to consume those APIs, as I said, uh, um, retrieve and search those APIs. So all of these things together, I guess, made the success of, uh, of this technology. Right, but when we move forwards then, um... So, so API is currently king. Do you, do you now see a situation where uh, we've come up with a new integration pattern? Uh, if so, what is that? Uh... Yeah, and our I guess as we have heard from other sessions yesterday, I guess we we strongly believe in multi-style integration approach. But one patterns that is definitely here already it's um, is the event driven. I think, and um, it's it's really uh here already yeah. <laughs> and it's something that is not new in the end right we have seen this before um but it's coming back as a preference of um hey here we have peter it's coming back as a preference yes i'm uh, joining uh, by uh, uh lap by my mobile so it's maybe not the okay. best quality but... the you see the mobile channel is saving us <laughs> <now>. absolutely <laughs> well done <laughs> hi peter nice you so, can make it Sorry for that. So maybe, yeah, so I'm still I don't know if Peter, you heard, I don't know if Peter, if you heard anything, what we said, we were jumping now to the second question, but maybe I'll pause here and let yeah. you comment for the first one. Yeah. Um, so what uh, I wanted to say is, yes, uh, since we have uh, API, uh, it's, a, it's basically a lot of evolution what we see here. When we look uh, at the history of all these uh, integration patterns, what we have seen is uh, integration patterns across uh, transactional, but now then it moved at the end of the day to not a transactional pattern. And that's why we initiated this discussion. Yeah? And this is what we also will see uh, at, at, in the future more often is more a context sensitive and uh, not an, an, an Transaction-based pattern, we will see more an event-based pattern. So means that we are not, uh, when you, today, yeah, so you see that a sample of Google Maps, yeah, <clears throat> that you click on the map, then you, it, a window opens up, then you search for a rest, uh, then you get location-based information, but it always is in the context of an API, of a request and a response. And this is not what we see in the future. If we look at patterns, for instance, uh, a plane is delayed, yeah? so then you are subscribing to a, an, an event, so plane is delayed. And then what we are seeing is that the APIs are basically triggered on the workflow automatically. And this is what we will see here really in the future, uh, that we can uh, have a more customer face, the customer oriented interaction of integration, where the, the, the automation, where the artificial intelligence, the AI defines the pattern, how to integrate what is best for the customer. And that's why we see now that in, in terms of evolution, we see the APIs are going, uh, that we see a bridge of the different integration patterns. Okay, great. And then the, the second question that Carmen already started to, to answer at that point was then, you know, um, so do we see that integration has come up with a new pattern? 
Yeah, and I was starting to mention about events uh, uh, pattern. And as, as I think, why is this coming right back? Uh, I also see two sides, let's say, one more coming from the customer demands and the other one more from the technology, let's say, triggered. And from the customer demand is exactly what you and, and Peter were saying about the context. I think, I think maybe even more now, number one priority or one of the number one priorities for our customers is how to deliver personalized, uh, you know, a personalized uh, content to their customers. So bringing this content closer to the application that are consuming, so backend data, and making this in a context when it's needed, when it's requested, as Peter was giving the example with a with a with a um, airplane, I guess that's where events fits very well, right, into this pattern. Consuming events at the right time and delivering for triggered maybe by a different context, different event, and in that context, offer the right data, right um, personalized offer to their customers, right? So I guess that's one side. We lost Peter again. Uh, that's one side, I guess, right? So more like a market demand, again, coming from the, our customers trying to deliver personalized contest, context, personalized recommendation, pre personalized offers, and so on. The other one, which I believe is also triggering this event, asynchronous communication, it can come from the evolution towards microservices and cloud native approach, because in essence, this may be more an internal, but it can be external, but the microservices in essence needs to be decoupled. So this decentralization and decoupling of components, I guess also require um, an asynchronous communication to be more independent and live their own life and be consumed and exposed. And that's where we see the events type of asynchronous communication also uh, a good fit. So I think the two sides combined will bring the events back into the into the picture. That's so good, Peter. I don't the, know. Yeah. Just to set you up there, right? Um, you know, that second question uh, for you to, to continue on that one. Yeah. So when when as Carmen said, yeah, when we are looking at uh, this this new pattern, asynchronous APIs, yeah. So this is actually uh, also a new programming model which we need to come up with. Yeah. So uh, asynchronous APIs and and event based APIs also require a new method of, of development. Yeah. So when you today, um, for instance, you are doing an API that's context sensitive, what we explained before, you are clicking on a map and you are accessing a backend and the backend is available. So in some cases, this really works because you immediately act, uh, expect and, and even demand a reaction, so a response. But in some cases, uh, it doesn't even mean that you need a response. Yeah? So this can be for data lakes, this can be for uh, streaming when you synchronize across uh, different locations. So there uh, APIs get more now also not only in, in this uh, end user, but also it gets more and more mature in all this context of, of uh, data center in more context of, of really how to work for the business. And that's when we the programmers also now need really to, to look what is the design? Yeah, what is the design of my interaction? Uh, they have to find a new way uh, how to define the, the interaction with the backend, how to define an HTTP request, how to really react to an HTTP request, because a timeout can be a timeout, but it also can be an expected response. And so when we see into this new message-centric interaction with asynchronous API, with event-based APIs, it means that we have to learn from what is existing, what is the use case, what is expected by the end user, uh, so that we no, now look also in a business context that just uh, looking into the API itself and how a URL, how a YAML is designed. Uh, and, and 
this this also requires that we are now, as I said before, that we are now bridging and also apply this artificial in, in information that we are bridging really the different methodologies so that when you see, okay, this is a synchronous API, but maybe it requires a timeout that you immediately switch to a different pattern of integration. Right, but isn't it becoming more and more difficult to find and choose the right integration pattern as we go forwards? Cor correct, yeah. So choosing the right integration pattern is uh, one of the most difficult uh, situations when you define the architectures. Yeah? So because when you are starting, so the business demands something, yeah, so in, in 5G, yeah, so they are looking for a use case uh, in the telco industry. So what they do basically they start from the business demand. And then the architects really have to define what is the right pattern to, to, to really uh, have the best solution for this uh, use case. And uh, so we are seeing converging all these different uh, integration patterns into a actually one integration platform. Uh, and that's why when we are talking here about API days, and, and I love the API days, and the IBM is also um, participating since day one, yeah. But uh, it more is a, a, the, the context now becomes a little bit broader, yeah. It's not only in terms of API request as a response, it really comes in terms of an integration platform, of an integration pattern. And uh, as you correctly said, how can I find the right integration pattern for this use case? It may be an API, definitely, but it also may be for some use cases a Kafka based, yeah. It may be an async API, but it still can be for large data transfer. We still need, and I have use cases with banks, yeah, or with, with, with companies like Netflix, yeah. So they just initiate something with an API, but then it's a huge payload which they transform and which they transfer in terms of, of the business cases, the initiating. This is where there comes the money from, but the real workload, the heavy workload is done by another other integration pattern, which is then file transfer. And that's why we are moving more and more into these different integration patterns uh, where the intelligence, the automation behind the integration patterns finds the right approach automatically. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, maybe one thing to add is that, um, and it's obvious from Peter's answer already that when we talk about this evolution, it doesn't mean that we don't use the other, uh, you know, te uh, technologies or patterns anymore, like uh, messaging or the orchestration of integration with the ESBs and so on. So each one of them, as, as he said, I think has its own best fit use case and it's just a way of combining those to achieve the best uh, integration uh, capabilities that you need. That's why we call this as our strategy and vision is towards this multi-style integration approach and not one integration fit all you need, but just pick the right one or maybe combine some of them to the best of your use case. And, and we do have methodologies towards this, so we usually discuss with customers via some agile workshops, integration workshops that we use, especially to explore and understand the business needs, the drivers, the use case they have, and map that the right uh, technology or the right capability on the right uh, to achieve the use case uh, and meet the business, uh, business KPIs and needs. Hey, great. Um, we've got a few minutes left and I'd like to take a question that was asked in advance from the audience. And that is how do you ensure API design quality or consistent API flavor when APIs are designed by many different departments? Yeah, so there are different kind of, 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 of governance. Yeah, one you are talking about is really <coughs> applying API governance uh, during development time. Mm -hmm. So during development time, what we have seen with, with, with customers already, yeah, so that they are basically do validations, yeah. So when you are calling an API, yeah, so 
Hook Insurance in Germany is such a case, or IKEA is such a case, where we, uh, when you are defining an API, they have, uh, first of all, a common dashboard. So they have templates. Uh, templates means that you have a, a, a YAML definition. Yeah? So and the YAML definition defines the policy. Yeah? So it means that in cases you really need to define every API, for instance, has to have an OAuth policy to identify the user. So which means that with these patterns, uh, you are defining a, a, a pre-processing policy where it says whenever some developer defines some API, it automatically gets a predefined policy attached to the YAML file, which says, okay, user authentication is required. Mm -hmm. So this is one kind of uh, governance that you say, okay, in my company, I will not allow anything which doesn't uh, have a OAuth or whatever you are defining. Yeah. The other, other one is that you are saying, okay, I'm applying a governance during the call process. Yeah. So uh, as I said, we had we had a company in Germany, insurance company. And they did some governance and when they called with the parameters, so they are verifying all the parameters uh, that you are calling it the correct way, that you are calling the correct URL. And the third uh, action of, of governance is that uh, also comes into the monetization uh, is that you are calling the right API and then you do it internal chargeback. For instance, um, we had this company insurance they send out their, their, their people and said, okay, we are now introducing that you automatically can create an insurance case. So they went to the cars, they made a picture, and then they automatically created an insurance case internally in a database. Mm -hmm. So this was a basic workflow based on integration. As I said, it started with an API. Then it also transferred the file, which is a different pattern. Yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, so when they introduced such a thing, it also meant picture recognition. Picture recognition, they called uh, API from, in this case, Watson API from IBM, but this costs really money. But it was so popular that everybody used it, and now they needed to apply an internal chargeback that only the people can use it, which are allowed to do it. Yeah? which uh, that they can also charge back internal their departments. And also this means that you now need to apply runtime governance, who can call an API when it's called that you actually monetize it either internally, externally. And these are all different angles of governance, which needs, uh, as I said, always API is a, a two different things. One is API economy, where you have a great idea like this insurance case, but on the other side, API economy also means that you do a proper API management. API management means that you are now controlling who is accessing the API, that you are identifying the users in case of, let's say in the banking, yeah? So open banking, a classic use case for API calling, that uh, you can in, ensure or can automatically find the best rates across all the banks. Yeah? Right. Done with APIs, real use case, but this is how it needs also proper governance. Great. I think you answered that great. question very well. Thank you very much. Uh, it was great that you could both make it, especially Peter, eventually. <laughs> we got past the gremlins. Yeah, sorry for it. that. I don't know what it No problem, no problem. But uh, I think we have to leave it there. The stages are starting again. So um, we'll finish. Thank you very much for coming. Enjoyed that very much. And uh, look forward to seeing you the next time. Thanks. And bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Ellen. Come and bye, team. Bye.